So I want to do a big shout out to Mateo and say thank you for all your hard work over the last six months. Um, really appreciate what you've done to get us in this place and really uh, the guidance that he's left us with. And then a big welcome to Shane officially uh, joining us. Uh, Shane's going to be working closely with the protocol team and doing a lot of like in between with the community and them to make sure that um, the protocol team is unblocked and then the community has a nice avenue to what's going on over there. Um, and Shane, I'm going to give you the the floor in a minute here. Uh, and you can give us a little intro as well. But I just want to do a big shout out to Mateo and say thank you for all that you've done over the last six months. And the floor is open if anybody else has any other shout outs that they'd like to do. Anybody in the community, any work that they've been seeing. Just going to hold a beat here. All right. Well, then moving through. So some announcements. Um, those who joined us yesterday in the ecosystem call, uh, we talked about a DAO proposal for appointing Ben as the director. We're actually giving a chunk of the floor today to discuss that proposal. But if you're a voter and you haven't voted, we do need you to get in there and vote. Um, and that can be found on Snapshot as well as on the forums. And then just some forum pop sockets announcement. So um, there is a DAO appointed board observer application, which Dermot's going to talk about a little bit later. We're looking for a technical leader and an industry leader, and they are different roles, but we have the, um, the specifications for that outlined. So if you know anybody who might be a good fit for that, or if you think you're a good fit for that, we'd love for you to weigh in. Um, there are forum proposals for that, and I can drop that in the, the chat here after. Um, Shane, I think you have an update on the RC0.11.1 .1 upgrade, um, and that's in the forum as well. Shane, I think you can talk about it in the in your section in a second here. And then um, we did launch the metrics dashboard, uh, which you can find at, uh, I'll put that in the chat as well, uh, metrics.pocket.network, I believe. And uh, it's got some information about what's going on in the DAO and the community. We really want to improve on that. So feel free to leave us notes on what you like, don't like, or want to see more of, and um, we can make that happen as well. Uh, here's all of our active sockets as of the end of this month. I have not done my review on sockets for January, but this is your reminder. If you have a socket and you haven't done your update, please get those in today. So that way we can continue to work with you on evaluate your, your impact for the month. Um, and again, if anybody in the community wants to open a socket or has opinions on the work that's being done by other sockets, we do encourage you to, to leave notes on like, hey, this is really helpful or hey, I'm not seeing the impact of this. The more community involvement we get, the better we can dial in um, how they're working and then make the program better, obviously. Um, and then Shane, this is your time to shine. I'm gonna pass it over to you. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, yeah, hey everyone. And uh, there've been a few kind of uh, announcements here and there through different calls um, about uh, the the new role I'm, uh, I'm assuming now. Uh, it's really relatively simple in terms of, I'm just working really closely with the protocol team and other kind of technical endeavors on PNF side and just trying to provide some uh, more comms, uh, some organizing and, uh, you know, it's it's very simple. Um, but yeah, Mateo did a fantastic job with uh, a, a lot of kind of back end uh, admin work. And uh, so I'm kind of coming in more of a uh, community facing uh, communicator on the technical side. So uh, yeah, not a direct replacement of uh, the things that Mateo was doing, but um, yeah, hopefully uh, get get a little more connected maybe between the other team, 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 team and other, some other, other. Oh, we got a, oh, we got a, hey, we, we need you to uh, mute. Thank you. I got you. Um, okay, appreciate it. So uh, real quick, we got a uh, more update. We got 11.1, uh, which is successful on uh, testnet. And now we're upgrading it on mainnet. You can upgrade today. Please do so. We're around uh, 20 to 30 percent upgrade, which is great. Once we get 60, uh, once we get 67 percent, we can actually uh, set a date for the hard fork uh, to then fully make the upgrade realized. Uh, Shannon wise, we have uh, we're we're in what's called iteration nine. You can actually see a very detailed breakdown of what all the protocol team is doing. It's 
since joining this role, it, it's it's truly incredible the job that they do on the project management side and kind of transparency side. Uh, you can see literally everything in their uh, in their GitHub. So I definitely check this out if you're curious to follow uh, on a very detailed technical level what they're working on. They they do a very good job managing their PRs, managing their issues, everything like that. So huge shout out to them for that. Um, it really made this transition for me, like me coming in and working with their team very easy because it's it's all very exposed. Um, so kind of high level goals of what they've been kind of focused on recently is upgrading from the Cosmos SDK uh, version 0 0.47 to 0 0.5. And uh, this is kind of a core part of uh, of the Sh of the entire Shannon architecture because you can basically anything that's compatible with the Cosmos SDK will be immediately compatible with Shannon. So doing this upgrade was is a you know crucial part and really kind of affects the rest of the under Shannon. So they're in the middle of updating that now. They've made a lot of progress. Um, their goal is to also complete deployment tooling uh, for uh, launching new Shannon pocket nodes. Uh, and then we have onboarded some community testers uh, and we're preparing for the launch of like an alpha test net. Uh, this will allow the developers to test features uh, in, in a larger environment than just their dev environments um, and allow experienced node runners to participate. So uh, we're excited about that. Uh, good news is, is there's actually the audit uh, the audit firm has been selected, and it's called, um, and they are called Thesis Defense. Uh, and the they've, I we're we're just at the beginning of starting that um, audit for the uh, Merkle trees. So we're really excited about that. And then uh, one other goal that they they recently did was they made all their protocol team syncs public. Uh, you can actually go to Grove's Discord if you'd like, and on Tuesdays and Fridays you can just kind of listen in on what's happening on the protocol team. So very transparent, um, really major kudos to, to how they're operating the entire Shannon protocol. Um, plenty of opportunity for folks to, to go in and especially if you're technically minded, poke around, see if there's somewhere where you think you can add value. Um, we are gonna be looking to add more uh, more opportunities. Uh, PNF is gonna be creating some more opportunities for folks to get involved. But basically, there's plenty of information, plenty of ways to uh, see what's kind of going on um, on top of just these regular updates that I'll be able to provide. So that's it from my side. Thanks, Shane. That was great. And I'm super excited to have you on board. Um, I think me and you are going to work closely together for a lot of this stuff. And I'm really looking forward to having your technical expertise and just uh, many years of experience in the community. Uh, to help me navigate all the things that are going on as we get closer to the Shannon launch. So uh, thank you for stepping in and doing this. It's a big, it's a big task and super appreciative of having you on board. All right, moving on to the next one. So Gary, now's your time to shine. Nody's going to give us a quick update on what's going on. I think Blade is currently on a plane. So Gary, fortunately, has offered to step in and give us an update. Yes, thank you. Um, so, uh, uh, <clears throat> hi, I'm Gary. Um, I'm part of the, the BD team uh, for Nodis. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, I mean, uh, like Zach already said, uh, you know, Blade is actually on, on a plane right now, so we couldn't uh, be here. So it gave me some notes to uh, basically update the community. And um, and I, I also want to apologize in advance because I, I have another call that is going on literally right now. So I'm going to drop immediately after this uh, so i apologize for that um so uh really quickly uh <clears throat> the gateway kit is now um available on uh, github and uh we have moved we have transferred the ownership of the github repo repository to the foundation um we will continue to uh notice we continue to be one of the maintainers of the repository but uh, you know now the ownership is now with the with pnf um uh if you go to the if you go to the github you will find documentation uh that includes in-depth architectural diagrams and how the gateway kit will work under the hood um we'll also continue to update uh the documentation as well um and blade will be on 
a, f- a future community call to uh, to provide even more color. Um, we also will have uh, additional gateway um, operator tips and tricks um, documentation uh, that, that we're working on currently uh, that will help uh, the future gateway operators um, with uh, calculating how much app stakes is needed for them and you know and just kind of a general guide on uh, as the gateway operator um, finally we also have a marketing launch um, uh, in, in collaboration with PNF uh, that we'll be doing most likely early next week um, we uh, we have submitted a, a video um, you know uh, about the <clears throat> excuse me about the gateway kit and uh, I think it looks it looks pretty nice um, I, I saw I saw a, uh, a draft of it and um, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll look forward to uh, launch um, <clears throat> releasing that uh, probably early next week so and that is all I have so. thanks Gary uh, appreciate the update. If you have any links from um, any of the documentation or repos that you want to drop in chat before you jump back to your other call, that would be super appreciated so other people can tune in. Um, um, yeah, that would be I, great. I actually don't have okay. them other links. Um, I, I don't have it with me right okay. now. Um, I, I think so. the links are actually with PNF. Um, so I, I think um, perhaps, perhaps we could ask uh, someone in the foundation to share them. Gotcha. Um, if anybody here, I can't switch my tabs right now, but if anybody wants to drop it in, otherwise I will do it uh, after this meeting. I'll make a, a note for everybody. Yeah, I just I just dropped them in the chat. Thank you, Shane. Great. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Really appreciate you coming and giving us an update um, and looking forward to the, the marketing launch next week. I, I will give an opportunity ads if you have anything you want to say. Jump in. No, nothing specific to say. Um, it should be, yeah, you'll find out next week. <laughs> it's looking good though. Thanks, Ads. Yeah, excited to see where that goes. And um, I mean, this is a huge deal. This is uh, the second gateway in the gateway kit, which is going to spawn an entire year of more gateways joining the network, which um, I think everybody is everybody is aware that uh, the gateway versus is, is it's going to be the big project of 2025 or 2024 and 2025, maybe <laughs> 2024 for sure. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, join us in supporting that. Jinx, you're on the call. I know you're always uh, big in sharing out and promoting stuff. So, yeah, super excited for for this one to kick off. All right. Cool. So moving into the, the last kind of big chunk of the day. So um, anybody who was on the ecosystem call yesterday, we had a long discussion about promoting Ben to director. Um, I want to call out that... There's a vote currently in the DAO for promoting Ben to director. And then there's a discussion, which is, I think it's kind of being lumped under the same vote, but many of the pieces of it are not actually directly related to voting in Ben as a director. It just kind of opened the door for many things that are uh, going on in, in the community here. So um, Dermot's going to chat with us a little bit about some of the things that we're doing. I, I think we realize that um, some of the communication has been um, just hidden. And I think that's part of working in a DAO, uh, especially working in a Web3 space where you're not all employed by us. There's just so much noise um, between all the different teams and places. So things get lost. I want to call out that, you know, as the head of community, finding ways to reach you where you like to get your news is a priority of mine. So if anybody is like, hey, a newsletter would be great, or, oh, I don't follow anything that you're doing on Twitter. I need it in a different format. I'm really open to that kind of feedback so we can make sure that um, all of the communications that are important aren't lost. Um, and that does seem like it was one of the one of the things that happened here. But I guess what I want to do right now is op- open up the floor for Dermot to talk about kind of our process, so that way everybody can understand how we're thinking about um, directors and the new observer role that we're having, and then open up for the community to give us any other things that they're seeing or feeling that maybe haven't been expressed um, maybe publicly. Uh, this is a great opportunity for all of us to get on the same page or at least to hear everything that's on your mind. And then we can start uh, sorting out which pieces of these are solvable and which ones we want to take on and maybe finding other avenues for getting um, getting all this done. So without further ado, I'm going to drop it over to you, Dermot. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Zach. And I appreciate this. And it's definitely something we're aware of. Um, 
we're trying to do a lot, but we can always improve our comms and how we split up certain pieces of key inf- information as well as think about additional calls and everything else in between. So we're always open for suggestions um, on that front. And I'm just going to run through a few high-level points to hopefully set the scene on the role of the PNF board. Um, maybe, and you'll see if you kind of think it's relevant to maybe talk about what the future of PNF looks like or what it actually looks like in practice. And then I think we'll talk about what we're doing in terms of improving essentially what we call our talent density or adding new talent to the board, which includes our own hiring practices as well as the um, DAO appointed board observer application, which opened up last week. So I think first things first, it's this isn't obvious to most people, and it certainly wasn't obvious to me before, before getting into this world. And um, many years ago, in terms of structuring boards, um, being on boards, advising boards, but well functioning boards never vote, actually. Votes are actually reserved for essentially the most critical um, decisions when things have gone really wrong. And that's usually to fire original founders, to be honest. Um, and I guess moving that on and applying that to the role of PNF, interestingly, that isn't a power that any directors of PNF have. The ability to fire a director or ultimately to um, appoint a new one is reserved to the DAO. And I think for that reason, actually, it's really important to realize that the role of an observer in a DAO context, and particularly PNF's context, is actually really powerful. And that's because they are going to be in the room ultimately where it happens. They can influence, they can share their opinion, and ultimately trigger a vote um, from the DAO to kind of ultimately appoint new directors if they see kind of gaps and ultimately to remove um, directors if they see a strategy happening that they're not happy with or or anything else in between. And um, I guess maybe zooming out a little bit more, um, when we think about this as well, I think it's important to, I guess, when you think about that distinction between being a director or being an observer, really it's the legal and regulatory burden that directors take on. And I think from a comfort perspective and a protection perspective for the DAO, we absolutely want those involved in the most critical functions in terms of approving our accounts, ultimately being a public face and leading the strategy to be fully doxxed on the register, in our case, with the Cayman um, Company's house, uh, with our address and all those details. And when shit goes down, they're the people who are going to be on the hook. Um, However, that actually isn't attractive to a lot of people. And that's actually why you see Grove has similar Uh, You'll see most investors on most startups actually are observers, not actual full directors, because they don't want to take on that legal burden. And secondly, actually, often if you are conflicted because you have a different investment or anything else, you're actually usually not able to vote because directors have a legal duty not to be conflicted. And I think they're part of. Anyway, this is all additional information and hopefully context. So please feel free to ask some questions and we can I think we'll have a standalone post on this as well. But that was just to set some context on the role of directors and observers and what they're doing at PNF. And then to link that to next steps for PNF, we we really, really do want a a rock star technical leader to join our board. Um, that's something we, as I mentioned in my post earlier in the forum, if you've had a chance to read it, it's something we hope to get with Mateo, but unfortunately we asked him to do too much, to be the get the shit done just awesome executor in the protocol team while also being an awesome uh, strategic input into what the ecosystem is doing um, what the protocol is doing um, that's really difficult and then to be that public evangelist as well on a technical basis so we're splitting the roles Shane is a fantastic hire and I, yeah I don't think anyone could have thought of a better, a better role to help the protocol get some shit done and ultimately to get them more aligned uh, with the community in terms of the technical leader for PNF, even though it makes it harder to hire for the person, we actually think the right person, once we find them with the right talent, they will want to be a director because they will want to put their neck out on the line to, to be a director. However, saying that, and this is why we included flexibility in the previous posts, although we didn't make this as clear as it should have been, 
maybe we find the right person who ticks all the boxes, but they don't want to be a director for some reason. We still likely want to include them, uh, hire them, and maybe they just become an observer or are just part of PNF in some way. So that is an open conversation, and we'll work that out once we find the right person. We'll share more information with the community. So maybe maybe I'll pause there and see if anyone has any questions. And I, I don't even know if anyone on PNF either has any additional context they want to add. It's like I can't see any comments in the chat, by the way. Chat is empty. Boom. And yeah, I, I guess the kind of the neat segue here is we really want more community representation. We do our best to be in the community and meet them where they are, but we could do a hell of a lot more. And what better way to meet the community where they are than to bring them right into where we are? And that is to have a DAO appointed representative to join all of our monthly board meetings and to have influence and have say and challenge what we're saying. And uh, ultimately, they are free to comment and share information about um, what we're doing, and unless, of course, it's it's confidential and that we made clear. But we plan to make sure that all of our board minutes are public. People can see this. We may have to redact anything that is um, actually um, actually confidential due to legal agreements or whatever else you can imagine about exchanges or anything else like that. But that, that's what we're looking to get. Um, we set out in the post in terms of the two, I guess, most crucial kind of um, needs we feel. That's the technical lead, which will most likely fill by the technical director, but actually having more technical input is, is never a bad thing, particularly if they have the right fit. And secondly, an industry leader who can just open doors and amplify our mission and uh, everything else we do. That's what we feel, but actually the community may feel differently. So if you're on this call, you think you could be the right person, please submit. Put yourself forward on the forum. Tell everyone why you'd be a great fit. And if you know anyone else in the community that could also be a good fit, but maybe haven't thought about that, encourage them. Give them a nudge, and we basically have the next, I think until the end of February, uh, so the next four weeks, um, to put together submissions, and then there'll be a, a two-week voting period where we just put to put start the voting process, remove out any essential scammers, to be honest. That's basically anyone who's just a pure spam uh, entry or someone who is genuinely um, a scammer. So that should be pretty clear. And then the DAO will, will, will vote on... Um, this board observer who they want to appoint and they'll have a 12 month a 12 month appointment and um currently we the plan is to pay them twenty five thousand dollars in compensation so again I, i've said quite a lot so i'll i'll pause there and see if there's any questions or thoughts or again if anyone else from our team wants to add any further context or anything else jinx you have something yeah, I just wanted to go back to uh, this the thing about uh, uh, conflict of interest, and especially in relation to the new folks that we're talking about here. Uh, I've voiced my support for Shane taking on some of these roles in that I think that he is both strongly connected uh, to the community at large, a community veteran, as noted in, in some of yesterday's posting, um, and is deeply, deeply, intimately educated on the structure of Pocket, is working on uh, the protocol actively, um, but of course, you know, is a co-founder of Decentralized Authority and such. Uh, I, I think it's a strong disservice to a potential senior technical leader in the organization to disqualify him because he has a stake in an organization that's particip participating in the ecosystem. And as someone who has been called out as being biased because I have a tiny minority stake in a node runner that I helped found a couple of years ago, um, that seems like it bears a little more clarification. It's been used as a cudgel many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great point. Um, and sorry if I didn't make that clear, actually. So the purpose of actually making an observer and not requiring um, this to be a DAO appointed director is actually so anyone can join and they can be, to be honest, as conflicted and biased as the DAO believes is right. Um, they don't have any legal duties to the board. They can be fully for decentralized authority. They can be fully for any company in the in the space, and they will just be able to canvas uh, and advocate on their beliefs. I, I assume that whoever the DAO appoints is going to be pretty rounded, but of course, we all have our biases. We all have our perspectives. Um, and the point of an observer is they can bring all of them to the table and influence and push as they wish. If someone who does have objective conflicts wanted to join as a director, I mean, yeah, basically anything that 
was technically involved in um, something where they have an interest. So yeah, I guess in say Shane's case, that would be to give a grant to decentralize authority or to essentially support anyone that he has a relationship with. So that's probably family or yeah, ultimately anyone he's married into, I guess, right? Um, he would have to absolve himself from any kind of decision around that. But that, that's how it works. So, so I think that hopefully should yeah, be very exactly. clear. So. I mean, most people would be uh, resolve COI by recusing themselves from a specific decision or vote in which the conflict arises, mm -hmm. yes? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I guess maybe to go back to it, because I guess that's the point of we... And I guess that's an interesting point, right? I think um, Shane being part of PNF, and maybe this is maybe this deserve does deserve a little bit more explanation around how PNF works, and maybe even kind of the roles of everyone. Ultimately, we kind of view ourselves as the appointed executive arm of the DAO, so we are representing the DAO and everything else we do, and we don't have such a clear split because we're all executives, unlike a traditional company where there's executives and essentially who are the management and leading these functions um who are controlling the spending and the strategy and then you have all the people who go do the work we are doing both and then we actually power up um i guess uh, and drive the work and the impact through the community and through the i guess ultimate advisors and anyone else we kind of work with essentially so um i guess what i'm trying to say is anyone who's part of pnf is already going to be pretty close to the decisions we don't take Books on everything else. If I was to push something that Ads or Zach or anyone else didn't strongly didn't want, um, ultimately they would leave, or I would have to go eventually. So unless it's justified, I, I, I do. No, no one here has basically full executive authority. Basically, that's what I'm trying to say. So um, it's it, it's a lot more fluid than this. And and the hopeful point to brand this DAO appointed board observer process. But expanding the board more generally is just to bring more talent into the room. Um, people like creating, creating the mechanism of a monthly meeting is good practice. Shared agendas, shared reports. And it'll give a nice forum for a discussion. Um, and so it's just really a good mechanism for getting good people in the room together and to step back a little bit from our day to day and think about where we're going and to uh, discuss it. Um, that's very unlikely to lead to a vote, but you'll make decisions, but it's not going to be hands in the air or anything else um it should be pretty clear early on if people have a discussion you'll work it out so yeah so hopefully that's helpful but um yeah please feel to clarify or anyone else to, anyone else to ask questions if they if they want to ask anything else silence do you think it's helpful um as i to talk about a bit more about pnf's role um or are we kind of happy to move on to the next section? Or does anyone else in the community, I guess, have any questions around what we've said or how the board works or how PNF is, is meant to work and um, that connection with the community too? Yeah, I have one, uh, one question on kind of what the distinction is between uh, I guess the director and then what Jack, uh, I, I guess Jack was an executive or an, an executive director. I, what, what, what is kind of the distinction there of like what Ben, uh, what, what Ben or that just that position would be, uh, versus Jack in terms of, and, and, and you know, Jack's phasing out. So whoever replaces that. What's kind of the difference there? Yeah, yeah, really good question. So I personally feel, and I think Jack believes this too. I mean, Jack does believe this, we've discussed this. The title was chosen before the foundation started, but the title executive director is, is redundant. Um, executive director typically refers to the full-time directors. So you usually have executive directors who are usually those in the business, and then you have non-executive directors who are those who are kind of part-time independent council or doing a kind of a few hours a week or whatever it is actually in i guess the foundation's case from day one i was a full-time director jack was a full-time director nelson wasn't full-time so if you were to use that terminology nelson would have been the non-exec and me and jack would have been the execs but this role was just used this terminology was used because jack was brought on to lead the foundation and actually that's what other foundations have done 
And they typically often only have one full-time director and others who are part-time. So hopefully that helps with clarity on that. But to explain it in terms of Ben joining the board, the biggest thing is that Nelson is looking to drop off and he has been having the primary responsibility for approving our accounts, um, for setting up payments and making sure our invoicing and all that kind of stuff is done correctly. And so he's had the legal and regulatory kind of essentially, not quite a noose, but certainly um, he's aware of the burden that comes with being a director. So Ben has taken on all of Nelson's responsibilities in that regard. And it's, I think it's personally, it's best practice to have those people taking on these crucial roles to be as on the hook as possible. Ben will get zero extra compensation for this. He will take on uh, the extra burden, but he, he cares about this role. I think we all care about this role. So he wants to let us have, prove his skin in the game, I guess, is how I think about it. Just one small point, just in the interest of full transparency, there is a, a token element that does kind of acknowledge that additional responsibility and the and the legal liability that you take on as, as a director. Um, that I think is probably worth just for transparency flagging. Sure, actually, and I guess, um, yeah, for full transparency, this is included in the original budget. So we included a the formula for token awards for all of the PNF staff was 60% of your first year salary um, in pocket. I think we included a higher floor price that's paid out over three years on a monthly basis for directors. And um, so that was me, Jack and Nelson. Um, and then 45% for all non-directors. So with Jack moving down to a part-time basis, his token rewards will come down. And with Nelson leaving, his token rewards will end. However, we do not actually plan to give Ben any additional extra tokens just because I, I guess it's much for much. Just may, maybe we decide to change that, but we don't actually have the current plans to do that. That's what we did out. We didn't set that out in the kind of the budget for this year. And uh, I think that's the current plan. So yes. So I, I, I do have that extra token multiplier and actually that's included in the accounts for last year and then the accounts for this year. So this is all public information and we can share the, the links to that as well. Does, does that clarify everything? Ads? Yeah, no, absolutely. I also, um, I don't know if this is helpful, but I, um, for me, it's important though, there was a comment made about salaries and, and headcounts. And um, I think, I, I think it's interesting that if, if Nelson's responsibility as a director transfers over to someone like Ben um, and combines with his existing role, and you're actually, instead of replacing that director slot with a new headcount, you're kind of combining those two. So you are reducing your headcount um, as a foundation. Um, to me, I, I think that is, that's an important nuance. Obviously, if we're hiring somebody else into the director role, then that would be an additional person in the foundation and presumably additional salary. Unless, of course, you then offset it against the board observers. And I think it is very interesting hearing, you, I found it very interesting hearing you describe the board as a observer role. I think it is really, it does sound like it, it kind of carries a lot of um, teeth without maybe the, the same legal responsibility um, and or need to kind of be fully doxxed, et cetera. Um, but it's just, I'm, I mean, for me, I'm just really interested to hear you know, what, what everybody here thinks. Like there was a lot of active debate in the forum. Um, it seems like there are some strong opinions. I think this would be a great forum to, to share those, whether you do them in chat or whether you do them here, or maybe, you know, if you want to have more information, um, if you want us to talk about this further, just an emoji react. So let us know that this is something we haven't satisfied. Um, we can do a forum post just kind of setting out some of what Dermot and talk, Dermot talked through just to make sure we are being, we, we're giving you as much information as we can. Um, but yeah, how, how do you guys feel? Are we, do you have questions about how, how PNF is structured or what we, how we're kind of allocating responsibilities or what we're, what we're trying to do going forwards?
can see Jinx typing. Okay, Fred. This, this is really helpful. Oh, great. Please do go, Jinx. I was, was going to add on something, but I'll. Yeah, I didn't want to capitalize or monopolize the conversation. You know, there's there's a lot of people here, and I want to make sure that that everyone has uh, the opportunity to express themselves and all the rest of that. Um, the one thing that that I saw that I I found very concerning uh, in in the current uh, debate, as it were, is that there was a tendency to attack people, me specifically, um, based on their voting stance versus discussing the actual merits of the argument. Uh, you know, people aren't always going to vote the way you want them to. And it's we're not going to have a productive forum and a productive DAO if me voting no means you feel like that's open season to talk shit about me. Uh, you know, like that's not productive. And, and especially when, you know, people are engaging in the conversation and clearly outlining their position. If you disagree with their position, attack their position. But, you know, don't come at me. That's bullshit. Thank you, thank you for bringing that up, Jinx. I, I think that's a a really, really important point. We believe, I think we all believe, that's why we're here. That Pocket will be more successful as an open source organization and not a closed one. So we got to treat each other with a lot of mutual trust and respect. Otherwise, this won't last very long. Who wants to be around in a in a toxic environment? Um, we're all opting into this. Nobody's required to be here. So. I think what you're saying, Jinx, is, is is super important. We do need to treat each other um, and show positive intent ultimately, and uh, expect that. In terms of the, I, I guess I'll address this directly in terms of my my comments because I realize you probably got caught in the crosshairs of um, some of the collateral damage that wasn't directed at you. And people are always going to speak privately. I think as an open source community, again, we want to speak as openly and transparently and encourage as much uh, open participation as possible. But people are free to vote however they wish, and people shouldn't be challenged in that regard. What I will challenge, and I think what isn't appropriate, is where the bigger responsibility, the bigger the leadership role you have in a community, the more responsibility you have to hold yourself accountable to higher standards. And if you are making serious allegations about people, your partners, people you work with, ultimately, you should be saying it to their face. And you should be very careful about what you say and how you say it and where you say it. Um, and I guess that's not directed at you, Jinx, whatsoever. That was quite clearly directed at Arthur in my, in my comments. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to have that discussion and open that up. But um, yeah, that, that was what that was referred to in terms of private backroom conversations and referring to people that had contacted me to tell me that things were being said behind facts that they didn't believe to be true and we should be aware of them, basically. I think that was very well said, Dermot. Um, like, we have a DNA for a reason, right? We want to uphold certain standards, and I think PNF is supposed to be held to the highest of them. Um, but our close partners, such as Grove and Nodi, should also be responsible to that. And, and I really appreciate you saying that, calling that out. And I'll, I'll echo again to Jinx, you know, I think you're caught in the crosshairs on some of this. So, um, yeah, it's unfortunate that Arthur isn't here today because, um, you know, it was a very lively conversation yesterday. And I feel like we had a lot of things that we could have reviewed or at least gotten to uh, some understanding of what his bigger pain points are to try to untangle those. But there were, there were concerns raised, and actually, I mean, Jinx, we had a good conversation about this earlier today, and we've had before, and we're definitely not perfect um, by any means. I think I'm being strong about things, of course, that I don't agree with, because I think we're all very, um, we take our job really seriously at PNF, but we want to encourage that open participation, or because without that, we, we don't have a community. So um, I, I think it'd be great if, Jenks, I think, feel free to keep asking questions, but if anyone else has any thoughts or questions, and I don't know if there's any in the forum at the moment, um, please do put up your hand or feel free to, uh, to, to raise it now and uh, we can discuss it. We'd love to open this up a little bit more.
So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of build off of my question that I asked before. Um, uh, under, I, I feel like I'm starting to get an understanding of at least PNF's position on what the role of the director is. Um, and so what, what, I'm, what I'm not entirely sure, because actually when I first saw this, uh, this post, uh, for Ben, I actually thought that this was replacing Jack, and that that might have just been me misreading. Uh, and it was only until yesterday that I went back and and saw that it was replacing Nelson, which uh, which I doesn't change. Like for me, it, it was it. What I just didn't understand is what exactly uh, is the difference. I I had thought that this was more or less replacing, uh, starting to replace Jack. Uh, but I guess I'm not entirely clear where this new position of, uh, Ben ends and then what, what Jack, uh, is or the following position of whoever follows Jack is. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's, it's, I mean, the fact that you know, super key and engaged stakeholders like your self Shane and um, Jinx and aren't fully grasping all this shows that we haven't done our job well enough to, to pull out all these facts and make sure that they have been really digestible. So, so Ben is replacing Nelson. He's taking on all of his responsibilities in addition to his current responsibilities. The expectation with Jack is that once we hire a new director, which we believe we want to be a technical leader um, and we want them to take on that legal burden as a director ideally um, that is when Jack would step down as a director um, and it's an open question whether Jack would remain on as a contractor keep focusing on on, on creds or whatever else may be most impactful for um, him to work on and even you know on, on what basis basically so I hope that helps in terms of it's more Ben taking on more responsibilities and more burden and in addition to what he's already doing, and then Jack is, I guess, you're, you're focusing on creds. You're ultimately taking on more responsibilities with documentation. Jack's helping with Gatewayverse, um, really helping piece together some of the documentation and some of the uh, technical aspects and coordination in the back end. But um, does that clarify things? And yeah, maybe Jack or anyone else, feel free to jump in. But yeah, maybe Shane will first stop there and make sure that you've I've answered your question fully. But um, please, please feel free to ask any follow-up questions yeah i i think we need to better word director because even even in, in what you were saying you said director a few times and and i'm getting confused because because uh because jack is a director and so but then nelson's a director and then this this <laughs> this this is for the director but then jack was also like the a director so i'm a little i'm a little confused on what the, so maybe we just need to have clearer terminology in terms of of that if if this vote is clearly for ben to take on i guess what was nelson's responsibilities it is it's very helpful to have this kind of separation of what exactly those responsibilities are which it sounds like are the legal side it sounds like it's the kind of financial organization side um those responsibilities uh you know would make sense to 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 go to someone that is that is uh skilled in those areas the other areas of because when people think directing they think leading the ship in terms of not just being the public face uh, or, or, or the legal face i guess you will but but then who's the director in terms of the technical pioneering the visionary the one you know with and i think jinx and, and both arthur have laid out kind of what this character uh what this responsibility would be um where does that exactly fit in with all these directors i guess just the term director i it, it, it's a little convoluted yeah so the term director is just a, it's a legal term and that just means you have you're legally uh banned to certain 
certain requirements, basically. There's legislation around the certain duties. Um, so we can share more on that. I think it'll be helpful to share a full post that people can digest and review in their own time. Um, and so currently we have myself, Nelson, and Jack as directors. If Ben is appointed, Nelson will step down immediately. Um, ben has taken on some of his... Uh, his duties, but actually I think we want to have someone on the hook on the board for filing accounts and for, for taking on those financial and operational responsibilities. I guess I am leading from a strategy and growth perspective. Um, ultimately, that's done in tandem with the ecosystem, but that's what I'm pushing for, and I'm often the public face in conversations with investors and exchanges. I think it's helpful for, for me to be doxxed and on the hook for these conversations and what I say. And Jack has been leading a guest with me and a bunch of these investor and exchange conversations in the past, but actually is now more focused on the governance and gateway side and realizing actually he's adding a lot of value, but actually the things that you need to be on the hook for, legally speaking, are becoming less relevant. So actually it would make more, in fact, for Jack to step down as a director and for us to appoint a technical leader, as you're alluding to. So that would end up with the immediate board being myself, Ben and this new technical director, but we also want to add some additional influence and uh, ultimately oversight into this board and these board meetings and ultimately our strategy and operations. And that would be by adding this DAO appointed board observer. And then with PNF, we want to, in addition to bringing on this technical, we want to bring on an industry leader, most likely as an observer. But like, think of a big protocol, someone who's a rock star who knows everyone who can open doors, who can potentially get on stage, who can just be a great person. And maybe they're only doing half a day a week or whatever it is, great person to have on your side. And when they do give you your time, they're really adding value um, in terms of your call to action and everything else. So that's kind of how we're thinking about it. So it will be the, again, me, then this technical leader as the full-time directors eventually. Obviously, initially, that will include Jack. And then we bolster that by adding on the DAO appointed board observer and hopefully kind of industry leader as a, an observer and obviously the shape of this may evolve over time in, time in terms of who we're talking to and who we speak with but that is the current expectation and i think all of this will set us out the post to make sure it's clear and everyone can review it afterwards as well i think this conversation is, is that a little bit more okay and the shape? forum posts themselves yeah. have have helped provide a lot of clarity around the roles uh, uh, i meant mentioned in one of my replies that th this wasn't at all about Ben, but the reason that it was a relevant conversation is that it's about the director role. That's, that's where this comes in and why the relevance. Um, and it's, you know, looking at director roles as being primarily legal custodians of the entity versus um, be being in charge, so to speak, I guess, uh, you know, that's, that's where a lot of the separation comes down to. And I certainly see Ben as a, a qualified and, and notable contributor to the ecosystem who is uh, uh, in a position to be, you know, a legal custodian of the entity. I, I think that that was an important clarification and something that really needed to be brought out. Um, some of these clowns who are considering this a power struggle, uh, you know, deeply underestimate the amount of influence that a lot of us in the community already have. I don't need to be a foundation director for me to exert my will and influence across the ecosystem. I do that every day. Uh, but understanding the structure and the responsibilities of the director and understanding how selection for those positions occur and, and where you know, where skill sets come into that conversation, uh, I think was an important conversation that came out here. And, and I'm grateful for a lot of the clarification that's occurred. Yeah. And to answer your question, Dermot, I, I think I starting to definitely see more clearly as well. I, I, I just wrote a post and I said, this is what it seems like it's kind of suggesting. So Ben is essentially the legal and financial director. Uh, you yourself is uh, kind of like the growth and partnership director. And then the idea is to have someone else kind of be the technical slash tech vision director. Is that kind of a, a way to demand? Yeah, that, that that's, that's, that, that, that's largely clear. I, I guess um, because essentially we're all, that this is the part that muddies the water is, yeah, I, I think that's largely correct. I actually do get involved in reviewing the legal contracts because I do have that background as well. 
But um, sure. yes, in terms of the core, that kind of custodian features, I think that's an easy way to divide it. And I think that's a fair, fair, um, a fair summary. And I, I, as I said, because again, we, we one thing I'd like do to, a separate post to elucidate this. One thing I'd like to add is I think it'd be more accurate, and I just I posted this in the comments as well. I think it'd be more accurate to say ops and finance as opposed to legal and finance. Um, because we're all um, in a legal custodian role. Um, what Ben has been excelling at, and one of the reasons why uh, he's been put forward for this role, is the ops side of things, uh, the DAO ops, uh, the payment ops, uh, just streamlining all of that. Um, so that would be uh, a large part of the role that he's playing. Yeah, that, that's yeah, a really that, good point, Jack. That is, that's actually, I, I see your comment under, underneath that, that actually looks perfect. Ben is ops and finance, uh, Dermont is uh, growth and partnership, and then tech, that's where uh, tech and, and technical vision would, you know, still essentially needs to be filled. That makes a lot more sense. And that's why I think I, if, if this vote is about, uh, if this vote is about, uh, uh, ben taking over Nelson's responsibilities uh, in in kind of the finance, uh, the finance, and, and a little bit of the ops side. Uh, well, mainly the finance side. It sounds like uh, Ben was already leading ops. Uh, then this this vote makes a lot more sense, and I think more people might actually be okay with it and agree with it. It's because the term director, it everyone's thinking, well, who's we, we haven't had technical vision inside of PNF. And so when you say director, it's like, oh, well, now Ben's going to be the technical vision. And no offense to Ben, but, you know, that's that's why people are like, that's not his role. Like, that's not his specialty. So I think having these kind of clear distinctions is really what's needed and maybe not even use the term anymore, the director. Uh, you know, we are a unique kind of structure in terms of how PNF operates and how this board operates versus how traditional companies operate. So there, there's already, you know, some grounds to be a little different than how everyone else defines things. So I think it would probably be safest if we, you know, agree, you know, if it, if it's highlighted that this is not a director in terms of, you know, all over director, which is what people want in terms of a, or, you know, also taking the technical lead. and. Um, and just make that distinction clear because I personally, I don't have any issue with Ben taking over Nelson's responsibilities. I never saw Nelson as a technical director. Now, granted, I don't really know who is technical, who, who's been kind of technical director in terms of who's calling the shots on, you know, what tech, what's the technical vision of, of what PNF's funding and things of that nature. Like I haven't been sure about that, but I haven't thought that that was Nelson. So Ben taking over Nelson's, position makes a lot of sense to me. That's a great summary, Shane. And to be honest, and to kind of add on to your last question, um, I think it's fair to say, so when we put the Foundation for the Future post together, and that was, that was led by Jack back in what, October, November 2022, and we presented in Tampa, it was pretty obvious what needed to change. Um, I'm laughing just only because last year has been so busy and um, we've got through a lot and we've, um, yeah, just waded through a lot of shit as part of that. But we, it was pretty obvious that we needed to clean up a lot of stuff and just to get the community aligned again, get the people moving, get people participating again, just make things more optimistic and just unblock things, right? So um, the technical vision, it was, that was just supporting the protocol team. It was staying alive for a lot of this stuff. But as we started to come out of this abyss, Things started to get brighter. Um, it became pretty clear pretty soon that we needed a technical leader as well. Um, and th th there's, there's subtlety to all this, right? So, like, I actually, and I, I think most would agree that actually in the round, having missing that technical director hasn't affected our ability to execute overall and to deliver our key ambitions. However, things could definitely have been better on the margins and there's no doubt about that. And we can, we've discussed that chain and we've discussed that jinx. Um, but as our ambitions get bigger, our ecosystem gets more complex and more mature. We bring on more gateways, protocol development evolves and ultimately we seek to decentralize it more. Having that technical leader 
within PNF is of paramount importance. And um, as I said earlier, we hoped and thought we were getting that with Matteo, but we actually asked too much of him. And the understanding of what the protocol needed at the time were different to what we thought and what we all thought. So things have evolved. And I think we have a lot more clarity around what's needed. And um, I think it's pretty clear even over the next six months where we're going and what we're doing. But this hire is going to be super important as I think it's the time post Shannon that um, where they'll really come into their own. But ultimately, of course, they can help with everything in the community before then. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll pause there and feel free to respond to anything else I said, Shane, or anyone else to jump in as well. Yeah, I, I personally think that uh, regardless of how this current vote goes, if it if it goes through, uh, I think it would still be good if PNF put out a clarity on what you know what exactly this role is just so it's it's officially stated by pnf kind of what it is and that this isn't the the director uh and so if if it if it passes pnf i i think could do that and then uh if it doesn't pass i mean i'd say you could essentially just re you know just redo the post and kind of have these distinctions so folks know what what the actual responsibilities that uh, Ben would be taking on are um, and do away with the whole the director uh, terminology and just have it be way more specific. So uh, honestly, regardless of where this vote goes, I, there's definitely a path forward here. So huge props to kind of working through and trying to flush this stuff out. Seconded, Shane, I, I think that's a. Uh... You know, one of the things that's become clear in the conversations over the last 24 hours is that terminology matters, uh, communication levels matter. You know, it's it's I I often don't publicly participate in in conversations around my technical concerns and such, given that I'd mostly prefer to just you know take them to who is involved in them. So often my technical feedback is directly to you know, Dermot or Jack or, or somebody else uh, versus, you know, making a big deal out of it because I don't want to undercut the work that the foundation is doing. Uh, but there's definitely been some confusion along the way, clearly, and and multiple places where I've either missed an important post or missed some definition or, or you know, for example, the, the technical leader, whether that was a board seat or an observer, I mean, little tiny nuances, which have a significant impact on the understanding of the overall strategy. So, uh, you know, I think there's there's a strong opportunity for some improvement on that specifically to help make future uh, uh, efforts like this go more smoothly. One hundred percent. Thank you, Jinx, Jinx and uh, thank you, Shane. I'm worried we're over time, and I don't want to demand too much of anyone here. But actually, I mean, this is an important conversation, and. I'd love to, I'm happy to make more time, I'm sure the rest of the team is as well, to answer any questions. I think if anyone needs to go, you, you got to go, do what you need to do, but um, I'm happy to stay for a bit longer if anyone has any questions or wants to follow up with anything. Yeah, one, one, one more thought, unless someone has something to say, uh, you know, with then flushing out what this technical kind of vision director is. Um, one thing I, I don't want us to do is get too in the weeds of what a uh, kind of this rock star technical director would uh, would look like. Um, I, uh, at least with some of the comments in the forum, I feel that uh we we might be thinking a little too i guess epically like in terms of what this role could be or what this role would would unlock um uh, because there's there's a lot of people like I I'll, I'll I'll use you know my some of my experience with Grove uh in the past having worked for them uh like Arthur uh you know he's not he himself isn't like a rock star developer right um that's like, as far as I know, he's not the ones and zeros guy. However, he can talk to developers. He understands developers and he's able to manage developers. Right. So, uh, so 
and, and yet, yet, you know, and, and he also has kind of the ability to, to help with vision and things of that nature. Uh, and then Michael himself, you know, he's not a rock star developer as well in terms of, you know, writing the most amazing code. Uh, but he's obviously very technical. He is a developer. So anywho, I just want to, even with this then developer kind of technical lead, as we now start to, um, you know, explore what that kind of looks like, I don't want to get too in the weeds of what, you know, this, uh, the accomplishments or the, uh, uh, you know, this rock star developer would have to be <laughs> in order to fill this lead. At the end of the day, we just need someone that is able to, yeah, able to execute, understands pocket and able to move quickly we we don't we just don't want to spend too much time on this to be honest yeah to, to this is a great great point again shane um just to add clarity i guess there's detail detail in the post around what we've identified as the needs and the ideal candidate um and we'll obviously discuss once we kind of meet the right people and figure out exactly what that is but the two biggest dimensions we're viewing this role through are and this is what we're calling a future-looking, forward-looking CTO type, is one, um, product evangelism. Do they understand pro uh, Pocket Network technically deeply enough, but ultimately can they articulate that well enough to the right audiences to get cut through in ways that we can, can, can currently do? Because we really need that technical leader. Olshansky would be fantastic, obviously, but he's ultimately focused on, on, on Shannon and launching that, and that's important, but we, we do need that uh, evangelism in the meantime. Um, secondly... They have to be technical enough to be able to develop or at least support and shape a technical strategy for the ecosystem um, and to engage in technical conversations. So I, I think you're right. I think the terminology around rock star or unicorn, we're not looking for the 10x engineer per se. We're looking for that leader. And a CTO is often very different to that kind of type. So I, I agree with you. It needs to have those two combinations of how good are they at shaping strategy and how good are they at product evangelism and being effective about that. Cool. Oh, yeah, completely agree. If I may, I want comment. We don't want this to be built by a committee, right? Uh, we want a visionary person, someone with a vision, someone who takes pockets to places and who has endless energy to relentlessly pursue his conviction, to uh, talk with people, explain, and evangelize all of this. Uh, yeah, for me, it is more than this rock star technical. For me, it is really the vision, and it's connections, and it is energy, really. And we want a person to be like on the spot for this. His role is being that. He's being passionate and motivated for this because if we are just you know uh, peanut buttering the responsibilities to many people then we end up with a committee not really responsible not really accountable you know everyone is pointing or expecting others to do things uh, and when i thought you know the director i thought that was the person that was the role you know i also misunderstood like many others uh, in this forum but i still think we need that person we need that leader Yeah, just to jump in, I mean, I fully agree. This this person should absolutely be a leader, and that's why we we want them at the highest seniority we can and to be on the hook and to be the very best person they can. Yeah, they, they absolutely need to be able to, uh, to have that vision and lead. So if that wasn't clear, I fully agree. And definitely we don't just want someone to coast in, take their check, you know, be kind of a fully armchair quarterback. Um, they need to get their hands dirty when it when needs to be. But um the difference is, right, it's it's not just one centralized team, just with 100 engineers underneath. We do have a community, and we want all of our community members to be working as productively and efficiently together. So we're just getting that alignment and clarity on the vision will be key. Um, and then the framework to enable that participation will also be super important. Cool. So here's someone mumbling, or is this my uh, volume down low? I think right. it's a little feedback. Cool. Anything else? These are great questions.
Yeah. I, it seems like, well, thank you everybody for participating today. This is super helpful. Dermot, thank you so much for leading it. Um, Shane, for your questions. Jinx too. This is, I think our, our ta my takeaway personally here is the vote ends tomorrow. Um, I think once that happens, we have some clear takeaways here, depending on which way it goes. But um, Dermot, maybe, maybe we just lay out some next steps after the vote ends and um, again, present the opportunity for everybody here to, to leave their thoughts or, or to weigh in. And I'm, I'm thinking as well, um, one of my clear takeaways is how do, we, how do we get better communication here? And so if anybody wants to work with me on that, please DM me. Um, let's figure out a good, a good method for that. And maybe an immediate thing that I'm seeing as well is probably having an open forum like this for talking about DAO proposals would be helpful. And I'll, I'll talk to Jinx, maybe me and you can DM on the side and see if that feels like something that should fit into the ecosystem calls where it is a little more open and unscheduled or or just a space within these community calls. So that way, again, all these questions are super, super helpful and clarifying. And I think we do need a place to get these out. So um, how do we do that without over inundating people with comms again? If anybody else has other takeaways, you know, drop them in, in chat here and we can make sure that we follow up on them. Cool. We're a bit over time. Thanks, everybody. This is this is on, on my side, um, super helpful and very valuable. And I hope that you all see that we're here. <laughs> we're here for the community trying to make this better. So um, keep those ideas coming. Dermot, this round of applause is for you. I think I might give it back to everyone else, to be honest. But um, yeah, thank you all. Really appreciate it. Catch you all soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.